I could probably talk about postpartum depression forever, subhanAllah, and how much our cultures and ourselves, particularly even as women, but I'll also say all people, including doctors. I can't tell you how many doctors don't believe in postpartum depression. It's the strangest, weirdest thing. I'm like, how did you graduate from medical school and you don't know that postpartum depression is real? Sometimes it's their own wives as physicians that I'm, they're saying, eh, get over it. What do you mean get over it? Have you not studied that particularly, I'm gonna go into a whole spiel now, forgive me, but <laughs> certain mental health conditions are biologically connected. Postpartum depression is absolutely one of those because it is hormonally based more often than not. Other types of sometimes in the postpartum depression itself or other forms of depression and anxiety could also have environmental causes. So if you're living in some really difficult circumstances, think about all kinds of things that kind of really cause you anxiety and difficulty could also cause you postpartum depression after the birth of the child. Or now we most likely call it peripartum depression, even within the pregnancy and after it. Or if it's not biological and it's not genetic and it's not environmental, it could be actually cognitive, it could be spiritual, it could be many different things actually. But to me, it's so amazing that we get so stuck on these things can't possibly be true, when in reality, the very same hormones that allow that baby to be in the mother's womb and carried for all those months is also are the same hormones implicated in postpartum depression. If you believe pregnancy can happen, then you believe postpartum depression can happen too. Plummeting of those hormones causes some women to experience postpartum depression. We had, I don't know how many, how many did we have in the room? Over 300, yeah? The stats are one in four women experience postpartum depression. Now count off, one, two, three, four, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there are so many women in this room alone, plus all of our sisters online. We see you in here, we love you, mashallah who also have experienced postpartum depression in their life. So when women negate that, I'm like, hold on. <laughs> you know your own sisters and yourselves. This is very common. The quicker that we can actually get over this issue and be there as a support for each other, the better we're all going to be for it. The better that we say to our own daughters and our own sisters, snap out of it, or shame on you, Allah gave you a kid, how dare you be upset? A'udhu billah. These are real things that happen. And so, in short, yes, Maristan, alhamdulillah, is our local Islamic nonprofit that dedicated, it's dedicated to mental health and actually integrating Islam into the therapy. It offers all kinds of therapy and support, alhamdulillah, professional by those who are trained professional therapists. The booth is at the back. I think Sister Tismita or somebody somewhere can answer your questions, inshallah. But also, please know that it is also virtual. So again, for the state of California, anybody in the state of California can access that care. And also please know that we also make sure that it's financially available. MCC has been a wonderful partner. We're able to have financial support for those who can't afford the therapy. And I encourage everybody to get that support, even if it's not postpartum depression, even if it's family counseling for your own kids, if it's academic support that people are struggling with, test taking anxiety, let's say, or whatever kinds of difficulties, please get the help, folks. Now back to the sister who's asking, what can I do about the stories related to pregnancy that seems that I was very clear about the story that I told about Sayyidah Amina, the mother of the Prophet وسلم, what she experienced was a miracle. Are we clear about that? The Prophet وسلم, is entirely a miracle. <laughs> and so clearly his pregnancy was going to be a miracle too. The fact that she didn't feel the heaviness that a woman feels when carrying a child or the difficulty that comes with it, or the very mere fact that when he was born, he didn't have any of the filth, you know, the, the stuff, the fluids that are on a baby. He didn't even have that when he was born. The whole thing, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the whole story is a miracle. So clearly that's different than any one of us, right? And yeah, pregnancy's tough, mashallah, <laughs> and I too wish that our cultures and our communities would stop minimizing the difficulty that actually comes with it, and also the struggles and pains of infertility. There are struggles and pains all throughout, whether having children or not having them. And so, what do we do? We support each other. And we understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually allows for us to understand the wisdom behind either the challenges or the ease that Allah gives us that every one of those pregnancies is different, or the lack of them is something also challenges and difficulties that Allah has given us 
to help us through into that next stage. But a lot of that comes with wisdom. And I hope you'll find the people along your path, inshallah, that'll help you understand those wisdom, inshallah.